Now, Australia has bounced back from its first recession since 1991. The quarter GDP figures have jumped by the highest amount in 12 years. We grew by around 2.5% from July to September. I expect the economy to return to pre-pandemic levels by the first half of next year. Explain that all because we have business correspondent David Willis. Yes, indeed, James. Well, whilst the recession may be over, the recovery is not there in Australia. The uh, figures released in the last few hours showed that the economy there grew by a better than expected 3.3% in the third quarter after a 7% contraction in the three months to June. The Federal Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, called it a challenging time, so there was still a lot of ground to make up. Well, joining me now from Sydney is Mark Humphrey-Jenner, who's an Associate Professor of Finance at the University of New South Wales. Thank you very much for joining us. Australia has been more successful than most in controlling the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic. What's your assessment of how long economic recovery will take there? Well, thanks a lot for having me. It's uh, great to be with you. Um, in terms of the economic recovery, well, Australia has just left a technical recession meaning that it had two quarters of negative GDP growth, and now the GDP has grown 3.3%. So there's some green shoots. It's starting to leave the worst of COVID behind, but there's still quite a distance to go. Uh, so in terms of getting back to normal, we're only going to be looking for that in late 2021, if it gets there by the end of 2021 at all. However, it is improving. And as lockdowns start to end in Australia, and as we're starting to look for vaccines coming on board, most of the economy is getting closer to normal, although there are lingering trade tensions with China, which is making things a little bit more difficult and might have some very negative impacts on industries like wine, for example. So basically, things are getting better, but not perfect. And what sort of effect could uh, that dispute with China have, do you think? Are we looking potentially at a, an all-out trade war between Australia and China? Well, we're probably looking at some negative impacts in some industries. So wine, for example, was the most recently hit with tariffs of up to 212%, which is huge. Uh, so wine is going to be pretty devastated. The major wine uh, company in Australia, so Treasury Wine Estates, it, on the day that was announced, its stock price plummeted 11%, and then it went into a trading halt. So we're going to see some major negative impacts on some industries. I believe that uh, unemployment could remain high there for several years. Is that uh, your calculation? Well, it'll probably remain high for a while and then get better. I'd probably not necessarily say several years, but it certainly will remain high. I mean, uh, people sort of jest that the government is the biggest employer of Australia in Australia at the moment, primarily because of the JobKeeper and JobSeeker plans that the Australian government has brought in. So as soon as those taper back, we're really going to look at more people becoming unemployed until businesses start really hiring again. And that's going to take at least another six months or so uh, until vaccines really roll out and people start spending uh, fully again. Uh, and we're not quite seeing okay, that at no, the no. moment. We must leave it there, I'm afraid. Thank you very much, Adi, for joining us this morning. And that is the business piece for now. Thank you. Thank you.